Hello, I'm Carla. I'm Ruby. And we just got back from Walt Disney World. First off, we our uh, room was not quite ready when we got there, so we went and hung out at Disney. Downtown Disney. Downtown Disney. Soon to be Disney Springs. Yes. yes. Um, the first cool thing that I got was a custom-made t-shirt. Now there's a, it's sponsored by Hanes. It's called Design a Tea. This is at Downtown Disney or down or Disney Springs. And they've got these computer stations set up and you go and you select your art. You can do custom text and you can pick your color and then they send it to the castle and uh, Tinkerbell puts pixie dust on it and makes your t-shirt. Um, we were the first people there that day, so it only took like Half an hour. Half an hour. I'm sure on a busier day it takes longer. But uh, because we were going to be there for the first Halloween party of the year, I made this cool Halloween shirt with Mickey and Donald and Goofy. Uh, they're uh, creepy shadows. And then as our trip wore on, I had the characters that we met autograph it. The Fab Five up top, Chip and Dale, Belle... You've even got Lady and the Tramp there. You can get their autograph at Tony's Restaurant. You even got uh, Cruella's at the Halloween party. So that was a lot of fun, getting everybody to sign that. Um, it's just regular old Sharpie. Uh, you just heat set it in the dryer before you wash it. The next thing I got was this deck of cards. I collect playing cards, and you're going to see several of them here. Um, this is a deck that is for both parks. So here, um, oh, this is the back of the card. They're clear plastic cards. So it's Disneyland up atop. You flip it over, and it's Disney World. The face cards in each suit are the same. I was a little underwhelmed by this deck. Um, so the ace is Tinkerbell. There's the genie, the blue fairy from Pinocchio, and Merlin. So, and then all the number cards are just regular number cards. So, uh, the next is a double deck that's pretty cool. This is uh, a Star Tours Star Wars double deck. One is heroes, and the other is villains. Mickey as Luke Skywalker and Donald as Han Solo. I especially love that Stitch is both Yoda and the Evil Emperor. Uh, one of my favorite decks is this Haunted Mansion deck that comes in a cool coffin. It's even like lined in purple satin. Um, you can even see there's uh, Madame Leota's floating head there on the back. And the Joker is, of course, the Hitchhiking Ghosts. And these cards glow in the dark. Uh, this is a really cool deck. This, I got this at the Japan Pavilion, at that store that they have there. And this is a, a Totoro deck. And they had decks for every Studio Ghibli movie. So if you're a huge Studio Ghibli fan... Uh, that's the place to go. Every single card is a diff is different. Each each card has a different scene from my neighbor Totoro, including the the two jokers are just artwork. Um, there's the cat bus and there's Totoro. <laughs> so this is a great find. Cool. So that's all of the decks of cards. You want to talk about pins? Uh, of course, you can buy just regular old pins, or you can get blind box pins, and I had seen some cool ones that were hot air balloons. So we got two of two boxes. Each box has two pins in it. Um, so one box had Jiminy Cricket and <coughs> Cheshire Cat. The other box had... Minnie and Dopey. You can see the rest of the seven dwarves up there marching across the top of the balloon. I think we saw them at the big pin trading store at Downtown Disney. Yeah. And we thought they were cool, but we didn't buy them there. And then later we were like, oh, we should get them. Mm -hmm. 
but then no one else had them. Like we went to every freaking pin place that had a lot of pins and yeah. no one had them. And then we found them as we were leaving Epcot, I yeah. think. We bought the last two boxes. Yeah, they only had two boxes yeah. left. I'm glad we found them when we did. Um, so we each got a box. Um, so other pins. My parents um, met up with us on this trip. And my mother has been to Disney more times than I have, which is a lot. So they always do behind the scenes tours when they come to Disney. And they did two different tours on this trip. So And they got special pins for each of them. So the first one is um, the Epcot's Undiscovered Future World. And they got this special Epcot ball with figment pin. And then the other one was the Backstage Magic Tour, which actually goes to all four parks and it's this Mickey Pluto cast member behind the scenes looking pin. Um, and they each, my mom went with my stepdad and they each got a pin and my mother doesn't care about or collect pins. So she gave them to us and we traded one of each of them for other pins. And then I kept one of each of them. Um, so the ones we traded for, we, I brought my um, Disney bear on this trip and we had a, like a day with Duffy. And so I wanted to get a Duffy pin, so we got a Duffy pin in the goofy hat. And then the other pin we traded for is this, like, Minnie Mouse Witch candy pin, which I thought was appropriate since we went to the Halloween party. And then the last pin we got is um, Hoplo. And we actually got it because we went to Wilderness Lodge for our first um, breakfast. Once we, we took a red eye and we got in. And we had breakfast at Whispering Canyon, which was great. We ended up going back for our last breakfast mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then we had some time to kill before anything opened. It was like 7.30 in the morning. Um, so we, uh, I had read that they had like a hidden Mickey search. And you just go to the front desk and ask them for their like Mickey scavenger hunt. And it gives you a page and you like walk around the Wilderness Lodge lobby and public areas to find their hidden Mickeys. Mm -hmm. And they also have one for the... Disney Vacation Club Villas at the Wilderness Lodge. Mm -hmm. So we did both of them, and then the cast member let us pick a pin as our prize. I don't know if they always do that, but um, I thought that was cool. The Hidden Mickey hunt itself was really fun. It yeah. was, like, just challenging enough to be challenging, but not frustratingly challenging. Yeah. And we're two 30-year-old adults, so I, I think it is good for all ages. And then um, one of the last pins we got was a uh, present for my best friend who went with us to Disney last time. He's actually um, a Star Wars sci-fi person, and I wanted to get him a Star Wars pin specific to the parks, and this is actually a Halloween-specific pin. It's an Ewok dressed as a stormtrooper, and he loves stormtroopers with a little trick-or-treat sign and a candy pail that looks like the Death Star. Um, and we already showed it to him and he loved it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we also got him a racer. Um, Disney has this whole series of like Hot Wheel style um, racer cars. And I got him a Goofy because last time we went, he Disney bounded as Goofy. Um, I was Mickey and Carla was Donald. So I thought I'd get him a goofy thing as a memory. So I bought a pack of postcards. Um, this is the only one I have left because I sent a bunch of them as part of a fairy god mailer thing, which is you mail postcards to people who are going to be going to Disney soon. Um, you could normally you do it for kids as like from the character. So you would mail this and it would be like, Goofy can't wait to see you for Christmas or something like that. Um, everyone was going in the next month, though, so I used every card but the Christmas postcard. So everybody knows vinyl mations. <coughs> um, regular vinyl mations are like three inches tall or something. We like the vinyl mation juniors because they're really cute. Uh, again, they're also blind boxed. Uh, the vinyl mation junior series they have out now is Adventureland themed. <clears throat> so we each got one. I think they're really cute and they you, they have a they come with a little like lobster claw hook so you can just hook them to a zipper or your keychain or whatnot. Yeah. We put them on our park bag. Totally. And so that one is uh, orange bird. Orange bird. 
orange bird, and then we think this is uh, one of the lady birds from the Enchanted Tiki Room. And then I got um, this rainbow Mickey keychain because I wanted something rainbow, and um, it's sort of like the antenna, antenna toppers, toppers, but uh, in terms of what they're made out of, but they have these little keychains, and they have lots of characters, but I just like the rainbow one. A resort experience we had, we were having dinner at Ohana, and we decided we wanted to try out the Trader Sam's Grog Grotto. I can't it had the word grotto in it, and I can't remember what the first word was. Trader Sam being uh, the character you meet on the Jungle Cruise. They decided to give him a bar. Um, so every drink there comes in a special container. Uh, a shrunken head, a submarine, and for, you know, nearly double the price of the drink, you get to keep the glass. Uh, one of the, the drink that I got, the Pearl, uh, it's a plastic container, so it uh, was free. With the, with, it was included in the price of my drink. It says, it says um, Trader Sam's there on the back. It's sort of pearly, opalescent in color. Um, the waitress said, that it would taste like Christmas, and it, it tasted like a delightful tropical Christmas. She was she was right. When you order a drink, things happen in the bar. So like for the pearl, there's a giant clam behind the bar, and it opens up, and this pearl comes out, and then the barman makes the pearl drink. Um, I'll talk about a couple of the things I got Carla before we actually went. Um, because I wanted her to have them when, like, as soon as we got there. So I got her, um, an autograph book, which we didn't use this trip because she was getting her t-shirt signed, but it's just like the standard, um, Walt Disney World autograph book that you can get, um, at all of the parks there, um, with Blake Pages. So we will bring it next time and get autographed. I also got her a, um, Pressed Penny album, and I think this is a really awesome design. It has a bunch of different characters and all the parks on it, um, and then it holds a bunch of pressed pennies and some pressed quarters, too, even though we didn't do that. We did do one pressed dime. Um, so she started pressing pennies last year when we went, and so I wanted to get her something to put it in, um, and then we did a few more pressed pennies this year. And then the last thing I got her ahead of time. It's a passport and it has, you write all your info in there and then it has a page for every pavilion and you put in stickers of the pavilion and then um, you go get it stamped by a cast member and then they'll write you a little message in their language. And um, the Kid Cot station. At the Kid Cot stations. Yes. Japan was one of my favorites. Yeah. And they're they'll, really they'll, cool. They'll ask you what your name is and write your name is in that language as China. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's super fun. It's a little, um, you feel a little more adult doing a passport than doing like the little kid cot Duffy coloring things that, yeah. that they give for kids. So we thought it was fun to get the passport and it came with a button yeah. or a badge as they say in England. Oh, we also got the super cute magnet. This was also from downtown, downtown Disney. Disney at the co-op store, I think. Yeah. So they have art inspired by Disney characters and stuff and you can get it in different sizes so they have like big framed art and smaller art and smaller and then they have these tiny magnets which is right up our alley so this is a cute one of Donald and Daisy and heart balloons so we it was an instant uh, must have for us let's talk about all the stuff we bought at Universal okay so the first thing I got at Universal um, was last year and I got this spider. It's a stuffed spider um, and it's in Nocturne Alley in which is like the bad guy area in Diagon Alley. And I actually bought it as sort of a joke for a friend who doesn't like spiders. Um, but it was so obviously my friend didn't like it. So it was so cute. So I kept it. So then the present I bought this year is for our friend Sheena who really likes Simpsons stuff. I don't watch The Simpsons, so I know nothing about it. But I read about this keychain, which says Bort, um, 
And apparently that is from an episode of The Simpsons where they go to an amusement park and Bart is looking for like his name keychain and they don't have it. But then there's like all these people named Bort, um, which is funny that they have Bort and not Bart. So I bought it for her because hopefully she'll get it. And the, the big, the big purchase at Universal, of course, is in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at... Uh, Ollivanders, um, where I got my own wand. Uh, this is one of the interactive wands. So within the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, they have various spots. They give you, they give you a map with your wand that shows you where all the locations are and what spell you need to cast. It looks very cool. It was pretty fun. Um, so, but you just go to the spots. You. You wave your wand and you say the words, and uh, the magical thing happens. Um, and the way that you can get your wand is pretty cool. They have a little experience. Um, so you, uh, at Ollivander's, there's a, I guess, a wanding. So they'll take a small group into a room, and a wand keeper will pick someone out of the group and do a wand selection so they'll hand you a wand and say hey point up there and do this and then of course something bad happens and then you do it again and something bad happens and then they hand you the perfect wand and like light shine and the wind blows and you're like oh it's magic and it's very cool and you can either you can buy that the wand or you can buy another one which is what i did <laughs> because uh, I did a little bit of reading, and uh, J.K. Rowling used the Celtic wood zodiac to assign characters the wood of their wand based on their birth date. So my wood on the Celtic tree zodiac is oak, so I specifically sought out an oak wand. If you are interested in doing the wand experience, I would definitely recommend going to the Ollivanders in... Diagon Alley, not the one in Hogsmeade. And I would definitely recommend going at the end of the day. We went probably maybe an hour before the park closed, and we were the only two people in the room, and it was great. So back to Disney stuff. Um, so I got this um, keepsake book, and I actually saw this on a haul video before we went, but the smaller version. So they have two... They look like books and they are boxes for you to keep your keepsake stuff and you can put a photo of yourself in the front. Notice photo. Um, and I just like the design of the bigger one better. Uh, and then you can put all your stuff in it and I'll show you what stuff we got. So the first thing we got is um, we did the chef's table at Victoria and Albert's and so they gave us um, printed menus of our meal. Um, and that's at the Grand Floridian. Yep, that's Victoria and Albert's at the Grand Floridian. Yes. And then I got the map for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party that we went to. And I have a Disney Visa card and they have the like photo spot. You get a free print. Yeah, you get this print for free. Um, and then I printed a photo of ours at home and then if you rent a stroller at Disney they give you this thing for you to write your family's name on and put in the like little stroller package um, but on the back they have this cute little keepsake thing where you can write like your favorite rides and stuff and put a photo and it's inside out themed and I just thought it was cute so I grabbed one um, so we could do that and then um, we got a Haunted Mansion sticker when we got our Haunted Mansion portraits that we'll show you. And then we donated to the Disney Conservation Fund. Um, and every time you do that, you can get a pin. And they have ones for different places. This is just the 20th anniversary one. Um, we actually met a guy who was wearing a vest with, like, every Disney Conservation pin one can have. Yeah, um, so he was totally pimped out in conservation. Yeah, <laughs> His whole vest was covered in all the different conservation pens. And then um, we played Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom for the first time in the park. I had collected all of the cards 
um, from home and we played the at home game. This was the first time that we actually played in the park, so I kept our map as a keepsake. It was a um, lot of fun. It was really fun. Yeah, we played a lot. We finished the whole easy mode. Um, so next time we go, we can play medium. Mm -hmm. And then at the Halloween party, of course, I got the um, special Halloween party card, which was Minnie Mouse this year, which was great. Yeah. Um, and then our the last thing in my keepsake box, we Disney bound it as Donald and Daisy. And on the morning we did that, we watched the welcome show. And we were waiting for the show, and this girl came up to us and asked to take a photo of us. And then she gave us this really adorable origami heart of Donald and Daisy. Um, that was just so cute. Yeah. So we kept that. So we got our, our ghost portraits done at uh, Memento Mori, the gift shop next to the Haunted Mansion. Um, which is really cool. Yeah. So what they do is they just take your photo that looks like you, and then when you hang it on the wall and walk by it, it looks like a ghost. Isn't that cool? And they're different. Your mouth opens. My mouth is open. Yeah, but it opens more. Oh, like, that's Look true. at it. That's so cool. Yeah, uh, and they're really good with customer service. She had done one and didn't like it. She just came back with the picture and her receipt, and they took a whole new picture for her. And the experience was fun, too. They bring you into, like, this sort of old-timey photo booth-looking thing, and they talk about the spirits mm -hmm. lighting the room. and Yeah. Yeah, it was really cute. Um, our other portrait that we got that I had seen before and thought was really cool and wanted to do were the silhouettes. Which are a great bargain. So the silhouettes, um, how it works is each person in the silhouette is eight dollars. Um, so it was eight dollars for each of us, so sixteen dollars for us together. Mm -hmm. You get two copies of the silhouette at least. I have heard that people have gotten three copies, but we got two copies. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can get a frame for eight dollars. So we paid a total of twenty four dollars for this whole thing, plus an extra copy of the silhouettes. Yeah. Um, plus it doesn't take long at all. It's like five minutes per person or something. I yeah. don't remember it taking very long either. Yeah, it goes really quick. So even if you have children or adults who don't mm -hmm. sit well, um, and they're just like really old timey, adorable Main Street looking. Yeah. I love it. So we went to Animal Kingdom, and I forgot my belt, and spent a significant amount of time pulling my pants up. So we went into the store, and we are like, do you have belts? And they're like, they're there. And I was like, oh my god, that's how much a belt is? It was expensive. It was expensive. So instead, I bought a scarf, and tied my pants up with it, and you know, it totally fit in, because we're at Animal Kingdom. Uh, and she has since used it as a scarf or a shawl. Uh, so it's been multi-purpose, but from far away, it looks like an animal, animal, print. animal print. Like, sort of leopardy prints. Yeah. But when you look closer, they're Mickey heads. Yeah. The ultimate hidden Mickey. One of my favorite purchases is, um, I had been looking for a hat for the whole trip and didn't see anything I liked. I'm also a big Donald fan. But I don't really like Angry Donald, so that sort of keeps me from buying a lot of Donald things. But uh, after we rode Space Mountain, you know, they dump you out into a gift shop, like all rides do. <laughs> and uh, I saw this hat. And it's actually a youth hat. Because all youths get the coolest stuff. Yeah, all of the best hats were youth hats. Especially at uh, Memento Mori, we saw that too. They had a hat that was like the eye wallpaper, but it's a youth hat. Um, but I really like this because... Um, you can see there's Mickey and Donald and Goofy and Pluto all in space in astronaut gear out in outer space. So I was super glad to find this. And it fits her head. It fits my tiny head. <laughs> we also got this year's Christmas tree ornament at Disney. Uh, did we? I know they had this at the, there's a Christmas, there is a Christmas store at Downtown Disney, and I know they had this one. We got this in Epcot, actually. Yeah. And then had it shipped, even though they actually had this exact ornament. Cool of Disney, though, is if you see something you want, 
buy it because it often happens that what you see is not available anywhere else, as was the case with those um, hot air balloon pins. Yeah. So, like, if you see something you want, buy it because it's possible that it's sold out everywhere else or they don't carry it at some of the other stores. Mm -hmm. This can be checked often with the new Disney parks, like shopping shop Disney parks app. However, <laughs> we spent like half of our trip trying to find the magic band watch that is digital. So we, we saw the Minnie Mouse analog watch that you can put on your magic band basically everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they have a digital one. And Carla isn't really like a Minnie Mouse person, but she really wanted a watch. And I was like, I know they have a digital one. So I tried to look it up on the Disney parks app. And at first, I couldn't even find it on there because their search function sucks. And then when I found it, it kept giving me an error that it couldn't, it, like, it wouldn't load. It wasn't saying, like, it's not available. It was saying, like, you've lost connection or whatever. Mm. So at a few stores, we asked, and they were like, we haven't seen it. And then at one particular store, I was like, do you know anything about this? And someone was like, oh, yeah, they recalled it. We aren't selling it right now. They're, like, reworking it because there was something wrong with it. And I was like, thank you. At least I know that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the app didn't tell you anything like that. Yeah. So anyway, but we bought this and had it shipped to our resort. It's um, a lovely ornament. It's all sparkly. Yes, it's glittery, and it's Mickey as Santa with a Duffy in his bag and Pluto as one of his reindeer. Mm -hmm. And it's really cute. We also went on the really cool train tour, the magic behind our steam trains, because uh, I love trains. Uh, and our name, they, when you go on a tour, they give you name badges. So this was the name badge. It's uh, Mickey as a locomotive engineer with an anthropomorphized locomotive. Um, and we got a puzzle because um, we did a bunch of the Disney um, Thomas Kincaid painting puzzles, mm -hmm. like leading up to our trip, kind of to pass the time before we went. Yeah. We did a bunch of them. Um, it's a 1,000 piece puzzle of Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. Um, so that should pass some time. I don't know if it'll pass six years, which is probably the next time we're going to Disney World, yeah. but. It'll be fun to do. So from Disney Floral and Gifts, um, you can get like a gift basket. You can do a like design your own bag. So I got this backpack and you can get it embroidered for like seven bucks, something reasonable. And then you can pick what stuff that you put in it. So I got a bunch of Halloween themed candies that I knew Carla would like and stuff, mm -hmm. including these really neat Disney villain um, jelly bellies. Yeah. And we got Rice Krispies, which we, it was funny because at um, Universal, they had a buy one, get one sale on these massive Rice Krispie treats. And I did that because they looked really good. And I only ate half of one. So we still had like a huge Rice Krispie treat and a half. Yeah. And then in this, I had put Rice Krispie treats. So we had like this four pack of Mickey shaped Rice Krispie treat lollipop looking thing. Yeah. So we brought it to the Halloween party and gave it to the first family we found. It also came with a really cool candy box uh, where the oh, box, yeah. the box was itself made of chocolate mm -hmm. and had um, the villains. It had five female villains on it. Uh, yeah, they were all lady villains. It was. Yeah, it was the Queen of Hearts, Lady Tremaine, the wicked stepmother from Cinderella, uh, Maleficent, the evil queen from Snow White, Snow White, and Ursula. So yeah. there were five female villains on the top, and then when you opened it, it only had four candies in it. They had truffles that were like sort of themed with each character, except for Lady Tremaine. Because yeah. I don't know what flavor does she go with. I don't know, but like the wicked, the evil queen <coughs> was apple, and uh, Cruella was um, cookies and cream. Ursula's was sea salt. Normal. Yep, and then Queen of Hearts was white chocolate something. Yeah, yeah, they were all pretty good. Yeah, and they the were good. Was, the box was pretty tasty. I ate the whole box. Yeah, it was I, good. I had the box. It was good. Yeah. Um, oh, but in this, there was I don't I don't really know why, but it had this little poem and this little like Mickey shaped mm -hmm. plastic gem um, attached to the floral and gifts box bag thing. 
I don't know why, but it's orange and cute and sparkly, Mickey shaped. And then the last thing, I saw this. Um, I saw this, and I was like, oh, that's so pretty. Sleeping Beauty is my favorite, like, classic Disney film. And I was like, oh, that's really pretty. And I saw it from far away, and I was like, is that a record? And then Kyla went over, and she was like, yeah, it's a record. And I'm like, cool. So I was looking at it, and I picked it up. And behind it, there was a Maleficent one. And I was like, oh, man, these are both so cool. I don't know, like, which one I would want. And Carla was like, they're the, the same. Like, it's the back of the same thing. And I was like, great. I only need to get one. Yeah. So it's a, it's a vinyl LP that you can play that has music from the movie on it and this gorgeous art. Mm -hmm. And they had it from a bunch of different movies. And when we were checking out, the lady was saying, Carla has a record player, so we can listen to it. But the lady was saying how someone was buying the whole set of them just to put on their wall. And that's everything we bought yeah. on this trip, as well as a couple things we bought on the last trip. I feel like I like Universal, but I don't love Universal. So we stayed at one of the Universal hotels, which I didn't think was as good as the Disney hotels. Mm -hmm. um, but because of that, we got uh, unlimited express line passes to Universal. Which was nice. So basically every ride, mm -hmm. we could go on the express line. And because we were there the weekend after Labor Day, there were basically no lines anyway. And any lines that there were, we used the express pass. So we didn't have to wait for anything. Yeah. So Universal was great in that regard, but... Um, we aren't planning to go back to Orlando for around six years, and I probably won't need to go back to Universal when we go back to Orlando. Yeah. I feel, that was something I was thinking about, like the, the wand thing that they have at Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's like, you've done it once, and it's like, one, two, three, three. But, like, Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom... You do it once, and you're like, oh, I've leveled up. Yeah, now and then it's do, harder. Then it's harder, so it totally has replay value. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think our favorite ride at Universal was the Mummy ride. The Mummy was great. And it's like, I think the reason that the Mummy is so great is it was like, you know, a dark coaster like Space Mountain, only with more special effects. And Empire. it reminded me of the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland, which Carla has never been on because she's never been to Disneyland. That's right. Um, but it's been a while since I've been on it, so I'm excited to go on it again and see yeah. if I like it as much as The Mummy. But The Mummy is great. Also, Harry Potter, like, Diagon Alley is such a great world to be in. Mm -hmm. But we hung, I mean, we were in Universal for two days, which was plenty. Yeah. Like, we basically did everything one can do in the Harry Potter areas of universe. We did every spell. We went in every store. We went on every ride. We went on every ride, definitely, in yeah. Harry Potter. And every ride that we wanted to go on in Universal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I I think we can wait until Universal builds something else exciting. Yeah. And probably long after that until we need to go back. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Hogwarts Express, though. That's my favorite ride at Universal like, experience-wise. And then The Mummy was the funnest. Yeah. We also really liked the water rides, which we didn't do last time we yeah. went. Um, and I'm glad we made the time to do this time. Did Jurassic Park, which we didn't get that wet on. Yeah. We did the Dudley Jew Wright Log Flume, which I thought was a really good ride. And then we did the Popeye, like, barge uh, ride. Rapids. It's like a rapid ride. Which yeah. we did twice in a row and didn't even have to get off. Yeah. Um, we just got... It literally dump water off. Yes. You get soaked, but I thought it was fun, and it was, like, really well-themed. Like, mm -hmm. the Popeye stuff is really cool. Yeah. We've talked about Universal. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your favorite ride at Wizard World? Tower of Terror and Space Mountain. Mm-hmm. I like Space Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain. Did and you like Splash Mountain? Splash Mountain is fun. I wish I did not get splashed. Um. Um, and I really like Simple of Mind Train. Things you wish you had made more time for or had done that you didn't get to do. Um, I wish we had gotten to go to the Lion King show at Animal Kingdom. Mm. I wish we had not spent an hour waiting 
four characters in Hollywood Studios and had done Rock and Roller Coaster instead. Oh, yeah. The uh, the tease that was Character Palooza. Yeah. Um, I wish I'd known about the Wilderness Explorer thing at Animal Kingdom and had time to do it. It looked really fun and cool. It looked long, though. It did look long. That would certainly have made Animal Kingdom into probably a two-day thing instead of one. Favorite characters? Uh, Anastasia and Drizella were really fun to meet and pose with. They were very catty. Um, we didn't meet Gaston, but it was really fun to watch him interact with people. <clears throat> we also liked Rapunzel. She was fun. I like Mulan. But Snow White was, like, adorable. Oh, my gosh. She was so cute. Chip and Dale were great. Yep. I was wearing a, a straw boater hat when we met Chip and Dale, and Dale, like, stole my hat and started doing a little soft shoe dance routine. It was so fun. I liked the character breakfast that we went to. We went to one at Tusker House at Animal Kingdom where we met Donald, Daisy, Mickey, and Goofy. And they're all in their safari gear. Yeah. And we also went to a breakfast at the Crystal Palace where we met Pooh and Tigger and Eeyore and Piglet. Yeah. Yeah, both of those were really good. Um, they were better than I expected them to be. The food was really good. Um, we just by luck met the characters without very much waiting. Favorite restaurants? Victorian Albert uh, chef's table. Victorian Albert chef table was like the best meal we'd ever had. And it's not just a meal, it's a dining experience. Like you walk through the kitchen to get to this little dining room that looks out into the kitchen. And you, the chef, the head chef comes out and drinks champagne with you and you watch the, the chefs will be listening in and being like, oh no, this is the second best. Uh, this is the first best restaurant at Disney, but we were like, what's the second best? And they're like, oh, no, no, it's this, this other one. They all had opinions about that. But yeah. They we talked to, food. like, a bunch of the chefs. We got to watch them cook everything. Mm -hmm. um, every course, someone knew, like, introduced, whether it was a chef or, the, like, the head maitre d' or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, we did the wine pairings, which was great. Uh, yeah, that was really great. I'm trying to think of what my other favorite restaurants were. Whispering Canyon Cafe. Yeah, that was great for breakfast. They do like family style buffet where they bring you a skillet full of food. And then when you have eaten that and you want more, you just tell them and they bring you more biscuits. So that was our vacation. And we love our goodies. Hopefully we've given you some tips on planning your own trip. Thanks for watching and have a good night.